Hey everybody, Scott Hunter at Airstream of DFW, and today we're going to talk about the brand new Class B van from Airstream, the Rangeline. The Rangeline is built on a new chassis, uh, as opposed to the other chassis that Airstream generally builds on, the Sprinter chassis. Here we're going with the Ram Promaster. Some real advantages with the Ram Promaster. First of all, our price point's going to be lower, but being a front-wheel drive van eliminates the drive shaft and everything to the rear wheels so I can actually build a lower van that makes it easier to get into and gives me more headroom for such a small space. On the outside, we're going to see a beautiful silver paint. We also have a gray graphite paint available. We're going to see really nice plastic applique outside, which is going to protect that paint from rocks and things like that. We're going to have a fixed running board. And on this running board, we've also got a little place to hook up your pet's leash. And I'm sure it'll work as a bottle opener too. We haven't quite tried that yet. As we walk around the van, we're going to see that the van has a beautiful awning outside. We'll demo that in just a little bit. We're going to see AC plugs to plug up your favorite devices outside when you're at your campground. As we walk around the rear of the van, we're going to see familiar things. We're going to see a tow hitch. This hitch has the capability of towing up to 3,500 pounds. We're going to have our seven-way connector already here for towing a trailer, or we even have a four-way connector for just a small cargo trailer. We're also going to see skid plates on the back just in case you were to go over a low patch. It's going to keep your vehicle from bottoming out. As we walk around the driver's side, we're going to see a few things on this side that stand out. We're going to see two exhaust pipes here. This is for our uh, hydronic water heating system. We're going to have a heating system that works with an electrical element uh, and also with a uh, gasoline uh, fired burner. Uh, and also we have our generator uh, tailpipe there. We're going to have an Onan generator on board, a gasoline powered generator. A little nicer than some of the other B vans by being powered with gasoline. It's easier for me to fill my fuel tank as opposed to a propane tank like we see on so many other uh, Class B vans. As we walk up to this side, we're going to see our power cord. We use a 30 amp smart plug power cord. We're also going to see our waste tank uh, outlet here which for black and gray tanks. We have both fresh, where well, we have all three fresh water, gray water, and a black water tank on board. Uh, we actually have in the back we missed, but we have a little sewer hose uh, pipe to, to hold our sewer hose so we keep the old stinky slinky away from everything else. As far as hookups, we've hidden it with the applique here. We can simply unscrew a little locking nut here, and once we do so, we're going to have access to our water hookups for the waste tank flush, our fresh water hookup from the city, and we also have a hookup here for our outside shower. And everything hides nicely right beside, or right underneath our little hidden panel here. So it leaves less to be drooping down. And as we come up toward the driver's compartment, we're also going to see where we fuel the van itself. The van holds 24 gallons of gas. Uh, and like I said, what makes it nice with the generator being gas powered, as I start to run low on fuel, it's a simple run to the gas station to get it fixed. I don't have to try to seek out some place that sells and fills propane tanks. Before we go inside, I wanted to show a couple more things that I, I, I might have missed and I think are real important for everybody. As you open the rear of the van, you can see the spacious storage area you have going into the van with the airline tracking here on the floor uh, to secure things like bicycles or anything else you might want to tie down. Uh, also in the rear of the van we've got our fresh water fill. This allows us to fill our fresh water tank. We have our storage uh, battery disconnect here and we also have a little uh, AC outlet there if we want to plug up something outside. We talked about that sewer hose storage that tube is right down here underneath. Now what I also would like to demo is the awning. Now the awning is going to be a manual awning. Where do you keep the tool? We're going to have the tool right here in the back of the coach. So I'm just going to step up, grab the tool, and show you how the awning works. Very simple. So the awning is a manual awning. For a short guy like me, we need to extend it a little bit so I can reach it. Once we do that, the awning simply goes, the awning rod simply goes up into the awning 
and we just extend it out. As you'll see, it comes all the way out and it comes to a pretty low position, but this is something we can change. If, depending on where the sun is shining, we can certainly use the awning in this way as a, as a, a non-supported awning. We can see how far it comes out, really comes out a long way to provide you a great deal of shade. But what happens if I want to make this awning a little more stable? Well, built into the awning, I have a couple of legs. So we see the extending arms that come out. This can offer support for our awning. Built into the coach, we simply have a little clip. We put the unit in the clip, secure it, and I can extend the awning arm and lock it in at any position. So let's just say here for now. I'm gonna walk over, I've got my secondary arm here. We pull out the secondary arm here. Again, we extend the leg. It fits right into the coach. And we wanna make sure it's fairly even. We come up, and here we have a beautiful awning to sit under, and we've got a wonderful patio light under the awning. Now, let's take a look inside. All right, we're gonna step into the coach at this time, but we notice the coach is dark inside. With a lot of Class B motorhomes, motorhomes in general, We've got to go inside and fumble around for where's the control panel? What do we have to do to turn the lights on? Well, what we've done here is we put a simple master control switch right here at the door. Just with a push of the button, my main lights will come on. And I can also fire up my patio light. So we can go in, be lighted, we're not fumbling over anything, and it makes it easy once we get into the coach. So come on inside and we'll take a look around. So here we are in the chassis of the Dodge ProMaster. We're gonna see a wonderful digital uh, gauge cluster right up in front. We're going to see smart wheel controls, gear shift, easy to handle. We're going to see an electronic parking brake to our left, power windows and locks. We're going to see all of our climate controls. We're also going to see this wonderful large screen which will control so many of the features here in our unit. Anywhere from music to our comfort settings, navigation, phone settings, vehicle settings. Takes a little second for them, takes a second for them to load. And of course, different apps that we can download and have on our unit. We've got charging cables right here available to us. We also have a wireless phone charger right here in the front where we can set our phone as we travel. Now, a lot of vehicles will have a rear camera where once I put it in reverse, I can see it and I put it in drive and I no longer have eyes behind me. Well, what I have here is I've replaced the rear view mirror with a video screen, and that allows me to see behind me, to always have eyes behind me, just like I were looking through a regular rear view mirror in an automobile. So nothing like the safety uh, you're getting out of the ProMaster. We've got airbags for the customers. We've got front airbags, side airbags. Uh, so we want to make sure if there's ever an incident or an accident, uh, you're in the safest place possible. Well, we've kind of seen the chassis here. Why don't we turn around and let's look at the fun part of the motorhome and uh, we'll uh, just see what, what this thing has to offer. Well, we've moved from the chassis and now we're going to talk about this wonderful dining area. The dining area is not just for, for eating or playing games, but it also has a practical and safety sense for the passengers. We've got three-point seat belts for two folks back here. We've got tethers built in, so if we ever needed to do a child seat. Well, do those two people want to eat or play cards by themselves and these chairs not turn around? Well, guess what? These chairs can turn around. I'll demo with just this one right here. Just a simple touch of a button, our chairs spin. We can spin this chair also, but what about a table? Well, this table can be adjusted forward or backward, but it has a couple of settings that allow for some extra use. There's a little release here. I can bring this table around and lock it here. Now, if I'm cooking, I'm in the kitchen, it's extra counter space for me. We're still leaving this, folk, this person out here, so let's go ahead and pull that button and go to the second adjustment. We can go straight out. That gives everybody some room, or we can even go a more direct approach and give them their own little section of table. So real neat table, it, it turns, it changes. It's gonna help people to have a good time in whatever situation they need. We can see all the positions there back as we put it up. Our window coverings, we're gonna have Velcroed window coverings that 
when we bring them down into a closed position, we'll offer some extra little storage cubby holes for whatever you might want, some books or something. But you see it certainly blacks out the window and makes it uh, a really dark atmosphere. So when you're at sleep at night, we can blacken all the windows out. Our little lights here, we mentioned reading, maybe some books and things. These little lights have the ability to turn around and angle however works best for you. So super nice there. We've got a little storage overhead. We've got a wonderful exhaust fan that we have right here. If we're camping, we don't need the AC. We can open up the windows, the doors, the screen, and we can have a really nice time uh, and have a nice breeze going through. Our cabinets, really nice cabinets. Two heavy spring hinges on either side. And one thing that we're seeing here with the latches is a little different than we've seen on a lot of coaches. This latch actually locks and secures the cabinet. So it's not just cosmetic. When I push that in, this cabinet is secured. So we're never gonna have it pop open uh, during transit and have anything fall on our head. So a nice new feature with the range lines cabinetry. As we turn around, we're gonna go to the kitchen in a second, but before we do, I wanna highlight the other part of this open area, the screen door. Some places have just a little Velcro zippered screen. We have an actual proper screen door to help keep all the uh, mosquitoes and stuff out when we're camping. Now, as we walk into the coach, we're gonna see a very streamlined, two giant screens of controls. So what these, con these screens do for us is it allows us to control everything in the coach. We have generator controls. We can monitor our tanks. We can uh, control lighting. Uh, we can control all our generators and batteries and we can know how they're all functioning. We can control our air conditioning system here, not to mention diagnostic settings inside the unit itself. Well, the second screen you ask, what is this? Well, this is that hydronic heating system we briefly mentioned outside. It is made by a company called Timberline. And what it does, it is your heater or water heater. It's a combined system. And using either a gasoline burner or a electric element will allow you to heat the coach or also create hot water uh, for you for your sink, for your shower. So there we have it. Now we're off to the galley. The galley is quite simple in the range line. Uh, roomy, I would say, but you got a nice slide over the sink. We have some electrical outlets with USB plugs that we can hide. Just simply put back into uh, the counter so we have a nice smooth counter. Little cubby holes for spice storage is here. Uh, we do have a nice bamboo sink cover. We've got it all put away in the goodie box. But you might say, okay, where's my stove? How do I cook something without a stove? Well, we figure people don't always cook inside, but on the off chance you might, we've included an induction cooktop that simply sets up onto the counter. You plug it right into our plug here, and you're ready to go. Now this induction cooktop, along with our microwave, can work off our inverter. So we don't have to have our generator on. We don't have to be plugged up to power. We can run either of those items just off our battery bank. And our battery bank is a 270 amp hour lithium battery bank. So it gives us a lot of time if we want to just pull over and boondock and, and, and camp a little, uh, a little off the grid, as they say. All these drawers offer nice storage. The cooktop goes right back in there since induction burners are not hot. It's something you can put up right away. We've got excellent storage throughout. We've even got a nice little trash can spot. Not many people have that. So we've got a place for a trash can that we can take out and empty. And we also got a little place we can put a roll or two of bags right there so we always have something with us. More storage throughout the kitchen. Big storage here. Storage here. And of course, storage down below. Now in our kitchen, we also have our entertainment. This is a JBL Bluetooth speaker. We can take our phone or our tablet, Bluetooth it to there, and we've got tons of enjoyment. That speaker will fill this place with sound. And if we wanna remove this speaker, we simply undo the latch here. We can take that speaker outside and enjoy it uh, outside. As we move deeper into the galley, uh, we're gonna see a little bit more storage. We've got storage here, storage here. So lots of good storage. Uh, this is our microwave. It is a regular microwave, not a convection. And like I said, it is small enough we can run it off the inverter. Our refrigerator is a really nice refrigerator. If you notice, it's white on the front. People say, oh, why not stainless steel like the microwave? This is a whiteboard. This is something you can draw on uh, with a, an erasable marker and you can keep notes, make menus, 
uh, map out your routes that you're going to hike, anything you want you can write right on the refrigerator. And of course inside the refrigerator we have a little freezer box up high and then of course a nice uh, spacious fridge below. So that's the galley. Now we're going to move into the bathroom area. So uh, come on, let's take a look. Oh, hey guys, didn't know you were still here. Hey, this is the bathroom of the range line. A lot of people are worried that these small motorhomes would have small bathrooms. But you can see you've got some elbow room in here. You can certainly move around. We've got a toilet. It's an all-in-one toilet shower area. We've got a nice fogless mirror here that's magnified. We've got our wonderful shower handle. But you think, oh, do I have to brush my teeth in the sink in the kitchen? No, we have a revolutionary style sink that simply folds down from the wall. The faucet comes up and we have the ability to use this as a sink. As the wastewater is here, we've brushed our teeth to drain it. As we close it, the water drains down into, into the gray tank. So what a neat little thing to have that secondary sink here. And this tambour door, really adds for some space. So many units have a square door or something that just doesn't allow for that extra room. And this door just really comes across nicely and still gives you some room to work inside the bathroom. So that's the bathroom of the range line. Now let's move to the rear and just see how we sleep in this thing. Okay, everybody, now we're moving back to the bedroom slash garage area of the range line. So our bed will fold up out of the way. And we kind of saw this from the back of the, of the unit when we looked in. We've got the tracks in the ground. Maybe we can secure our bicycles, secure any gear that we're going to store in here because our bed folds up out of the way. Now you might say, oh my goodness, but look at this back here. That's just a wide open deal. Well, this will secure down and come all the way down. So if someone does have to get into the back of the coach by opening the back doors, I'm not letting cool air out or hot air out. But what happens if there's an emergency? Oh my goodness. I can't reach the zipper. I've got my bed in place. What do I do? Well, we notice the exits are clearly marked. All we have to do is push our hand right here and that will release and open for us. So a nice safety feature uh, that, like I said, really uh, stands out so we don't have to go through all the, the, uh, the different deals to unzip everything. Now, if we do want to have a screen window, we can have that also and that's available with just a, a zip down screen so we can have everything open like so. All right, now how does this bed work? Well, first of all, before we do that, we wanna show the storage back here. We've got a storage drawer on this side. We've got some little cubbies on this side. Now we do have a lot of our battery banks, water tanks. We have a lot of things under here, so storage is a little limited, but we still keep some, and we keep some wonderful storage up high. Now we saw that nice computer screen up front what a great thing to have, but what if I'm back here? Well, we're gonna have back here a little control panel also uh, that you can certainly uh, use for controlling everything, uh, not to mention a smartphone app. Now we see no TV, we see no radio, uh, we saw the Bluetooth speaker, but what would I do if I wanted a TV? We've offered mounting screws back here, we have a power outlet, and we also have a place to pass an antenna wire through. On the roof, there is no antenna. So how do you watch TV? Well, we've left it open. So many people don't watch TV. It's, it's something they don't want to do when they go camping, but some people need Wi-Fi. Some people want satellite. So we've pre-wired all the way to this point from the roof. So you can add a satellite dish, install it. You can add a Wi-Fi uh, uh, signal booster. You can add a Wi-Fi hotspot. You can add a TV antenna. Whatever you want to add, it's your choice. You and the dealership can get together and we can figure out what you want to do inside uh, as far as for your electronic entertainment, if you want anything at all. Back here in the bedroom, one thing I want to point out, a couple more closet or a couple more storage bins. But also, we have back here a wireless charger, kind of like up front. So we can take our phone, clip it in, and we've got wireless charging right here. Let's say you have a secondary device. There's a little shelf up here, and you can plug in that secondary device also. So what I want to talk about now is how do we go to bed? So what you do to go to bed is we've got a folding mattress system and it's relatively easy to work. There's two little mattresses. We simply reach under to the frame and then this will simply fold out, fold back, and we have our bed. 
really a nice sizable bed for two people. But how do I get up in this thing? I'm, I'm getting older, it's, it's kind of tough. Well, look at this ingenuitive thing that they've built in here. We have a step that's built in. Got a little storage under the step, but this step is solid. As you can see, I can bounce on it, but it makes it easy to get up into the bed and just as easy to get out of the bed. And one more little highlight of storage back here we didn't talk about is our doggy bowls. If you take your four-legged friends with you, you've got doggy bowls here. Of course, if you don't, this whole insert can lift out and it can just be a regular storage drawer for you. So as we see, the Rangeline Motorhome really has everything you need for a wonderful camping adventure. Uh, and I think that uh, you should give it a try and see how the camping world uh, you know, works for you. One thing I like to say when it comes to Airstream is so many people, they dream their life. How about living your dream and why not do it in your new Airstream? This is Scott Hunter with Airstream at DFW. See you at the campsite. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or any recommendations on content you'd like to see, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed our video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again from Airstream at DFW.